There's a field that's not too far from my house that I see every time I'm on the way to drop my kids off at soccer practice. And it just so happens that I also pass it right at sunset. And I always get this idea, maybe you should take a picture there. And then I'm like, well, you know, there's really nothing to put in my foreground there. So I usually just drive right past it, thinking to myself, wouldn't it be awesome if I could just magically plant a giant oak tree right there in that field so I'd have something to put in front of the backdrop of that sunset? Well, we know that it's absolutely not possible to make a tree grow almost immediately, but there is a filter in Photoshop called Render Tree. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna try to do something. What I wanna do is I wanna see if I can use the Render Tree filter in Photoshop to make a realistic looking tree. And more importantly, I wanna see if I can turn it into an action so that if you press play, it'll automatically do the same thing for you. So let's take this stock image of a field, perfect example for putting a tree in and think about the best place that we can plant a tree. Now, this is a cool part about this. We get to think to ourselves, where do we wanna put a tree? And I think putting a tree right here would be perfect. So I'm gonna make a new layer because when we use this filter, this render tree filter, we're going to need it on a new layer because if you don't put it on a new layer, it's gonna end up on the background. So let's go to filter, we're gonna to go to render and we're gonna to go to tree. Now there's many, many different trees that are here in Photoshop, right? You've got a maple tree, you've got oak trees, redwoods, all these different trees here. So what I would suggest is that if this is something that you're interested in doing, picking a tree that's close to the place that you live in. Now, where I live in Missouri, a maple tree would be perfect. The light direction. So if we move it to the left, it's gonna be the left side of the tree that's gonna get the light. We move it to the right, it's gonna be the right side of the tree that gets the light. And we put it right in the middle, basically that light will just disperse around the whole image. Now, because we don't necessarily know where the direction of light is coming from in this image, I'm just gonna go with somewhere right in the middle. So one of the things, if I'm going to plant this tree right here, I need to consider the leaves size and the leaves amount. So the leaves amount, as you can imagine, is how many leaves are on the tree. If there's no leaves there, then it's a tree in the fall. Uh, so we put the leaves up. It's going to be about, about the 76 mark. That looks pretty good. The leaves size. Now, you will want to increase the size the closer the tree gets to, but we're going to be putting that tree further away. So let's reduce that a little bit there. The branches height, that's how high the tree goes up. So if you put this all the way up to the top, that's not what a maple tree looks like. So let's move that down and that should be appropriate there. A smaller trunk usually works out pretty well for this. And then branches thickness is how thick obviously those branches are going to be that are coming out of that tree. Uh, the thicker the branches, probably the more realistic it's going to look. If we make it smaller, it's not going to look realistic at all. So we're trying to make a realistic looking tree here. I want to see if I can make this look as real as possible in this field. Okay. Now there are different types of leaves that you can add. If you press default leaves, it's obviously going to select maple type leaves for this tree, which could be exactly what you want. But if that's not what you want, you can select a different type of leaf for this tree. Now the leaves for this tree would be obviously the maple leaf. So leaves two is going to be perfect here. You can press the randomize shape button and that's going to randomize the shape of the tree that you get, or you can change the arrangement here. There is no rhyme or reason to this arrangement, so don't try to think that there is. Um, when you're rendering these trees, it's all kind of random. As you move this, it's going to randomly move the tree and make it look different. So I think this is actually a pretty good one. We'll keep this arrangement at about the 85.2 mark. But if we hop up here to advanced, here's where we get to change a couple of things. Now, I don't typically use custom colors for these leaves because if you use a custom color, it can look funky, especially if you selected like purple, <laughs> maybe if it's an IR tree, maybe. Uh, but I do use a custom color for the branches because a lot of times I think the color that they choose for the branches is too light of a color, especially because a lot of those leaves would be casting shadows over the tree. So selecting a custom color for that branch can be a good idea in the dark brown area there. And we'll press okay. And I don't want flat shading because it's gonna look like something out of a video game. That's about what I'm gonna do to render this tree. And I'm gonna press okay. So that's gonna render that tree. It's gonna put it right there uh, in my new layer that I have here. Now, obviously this tree, when it places it, it's just gonna put it right in the middle of your image. So now we need to size it. So I'm gonna press Command or Control T. And when I press Command or Control T, I can move this, make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna put it right back here where I wanted to plant that tree. Here's a, this is the great part about making your own composites. You can put things wherever you want. Now, one of the things that I tend to think typically with most of the times that I've been rendering these trees in Photoshop, and I have done this in a couple of my compositions and people don't even realize they're there. But what I've noticed is that uh, the trees aren't really wide enough. So if you press and hold shift while you click on that, that left or right side, you can widen out the tree and make it look a little bit more realistic there. It makes the trunk a little bit thicker and gives some more volume and some more depth to the way trees actually grow outward, specifically something like a maple tree for sure. We'll press enter. 
So I'm going to move this and I'm going to zoom in here. Control space bar to zoom in. Now you'll see this and it, it looks pretty good. It looks like a pretty good maple tree, but I don't think it's, it doesn't look real. Okay. Now we need to make it look real. So in order to make this look real, let's, let's phone a friend here. Let's phone, phone a friend that's already a nice little happy tree out in the middle of a field. And that would be this tree right here. Aha. So here we have a nice little happy tree. Anybody Bob Ross fan? <laughs> I used to be a huge Bob Ross fan. The happy trees that he would put everywhere. This looks like a pretty happy tree in the middle of the field. And this is what I want. This is what I want in the middle of the field that I drive past. So the reason why I'm pulling this up is because I want to look at the similarities between this tree and the rendered tree. Now, if we look at the similarities here, the colors are a little bit off on this tree. That's one thing that I'm going to look at here, but I want to zoom in really close. And there's a couple things that I'm going to be paying attention to while I zoom in and move around this. The first thing that I'm looking at here is that this tree is kind of blurry. Why? Because it's further out in that pasture. So the blur of that tree is actually matching the blur of the foreground. There's another thing that I notice here as I zoom in a little bit closer. It's pretty noisy. So one thing that I'm going to probably need to add here is some blur and some noise. And if we look at the side of a tree, this is a lens kind of artifact that happens called chromatic aberration. If we want to make this look as real as possible, we might want to add a little bit of chromatic aberration. So I'm, I'm stacking up the things that I need to do by phoning this friend, this friend saying, Blake, <laughs> I'm a happy tree. I'm already out here. You already see me here. You can use me to make your happy tree. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off by blurring this tree and I'm going to blur the tree to match the blur of the background. So I'm going to zoom into this tree here and you can see that it's already too much like a, like it looks like a cartoon. So we need to make it look real. We need to make it look like, like it was made from pixels because if we zoom in here, it looks like it's made from uh, vectors. So let's go ahead and go to filter. Let's go to blur. And there's an interesting blur I'm going to use here. It's actually called the box blur. Now, the box blur is a really interesting blur because it actually blurs based on the pixel value that would be around that area in a box type shape rather than the Gaussian blur, which just kind of blurs the junk out of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this down to one here to get it to the lowest blur possible. If that's set to one, let's look and see how this is going to blend in with that background. There. It looks like I might need to bump it up a little bit more. So I'm going to put that at about two. Okay, so let's put that at two pixels. That looks like a pretty good blur that we've got going on for this image. I'm going to blur it by two pixels because I think that matches the inside really well. So that blur looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Can't really tell if it's looking a little bit more real or not, but at least the blur of the tree matches the blur of the grass. So now let's add some noise. Yes, we're going to actually add noise to this image because like we said, this looks like it's vector based and not pixel based. So let's make it look like it's pixel based. So we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to noise and we're going to go to add noise. I want this to be a Gaussian noise because I think the Gaussian noise looks a little bit better than the uniform noise. Actually, I don't know. Uniform noise looks pretty good for this one. Let's move up this amount a little bit. So we'll make that a uniform noise at about 3%. Typically, I use the Gaussian noise, but the uniform noise is actually looking pretty good for this. Let's see what the Gaussian looks like. Well, no, I think the Gaussian actually looks more like realistic noise. Okay, so I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. We're adding some pixel depth there that wasn't there before. Let's just change this to like 2.5%. So it's not quite as strong there. And we'll press OK. So now let's zoom out a little bit to about 100%. That's actually looking a little bit better there. Okay. So now it looks like I'm missing something. If I go back to this image and I zoom out a little bit more, what do we see here? We see a shadow. So let's make a shadow for this. Now, there's a couple ways you can make a shadow in Photoshop. And one, one might think, okay, we'll put a drop shadow on there. So if we were to double click on this and then maybe make a drop shadow, we'll try that. That's not going to work because it's just a, you know, shadow of the tree. Uh, but let's just do this. Let's duplicate this. I'm going to press Command or Control J to duplicate this layer. We'll call this shadow. So I know it's the shadow and I'll place it underneath my tree. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press command or control T and that'll allow me to get into free transform mode. I'll press and hold shift and just flatten this down just like this and get it out like that. Okay. And then a little bit over here because the light looks like it's coming a little bit stronger from that side. And then if I press the control key, I can actually get the perspective just right to be right there where the trunk is. And I'll press V to move this up a little bit just to get it right underneath there. Now that obviously doesn't look like a shadow. What does it look like? It looks like we took the tree, we flattened it, we put it underneath it. So let's do this. Let's press control on this. So control click this and we'll grab that shift F5. I'm going to fill that with black. Okay. So now we got that filled with black. Let's change the blend mode to something like one of the contrast blend modes, like maybe hard light and then drop the opacity of this. Okay. So that's looking 
pretty good in like a shadow, right? We're going to need to do one thing to that though. What does a shadow look like? It looks like a blur. So let's go to filter. Let's go to blur. And let's use the Gaussian blur for this just because it's pretty simple and pretty easy. And we'll make that blur about just like that. Press enter. That's actually starting to look real, isn't it? That shadow just sets the whole thing off and makes it look a little bit more realistic. Now, one thing that I'm noticing in the trunk specifically is that this trunk has a lot of nice little wavy lines in it. You see that? And this one looks a little contrived. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the top layer of this. So let's make a new layer. We're going to go to filter, render, and then in here there's something called render fibers. And those fibers actually look like tree trunk fibers, especially from far away. Now it's going to take on whatever color is in my color palette. And what's in my color palette right now is actually a brown color. But if I had black over there, that would be acceptable too. It's actually taking on the brown that I used for the tree trunk. So I'll press OK. Now it's not going to look good. We need to press Alt or Option to clip that in to there. Now we're going to change the blend mode here and we're going to change this blend mode to multiply because what multiply will do is multiply will knock out all the white and just leave the dark parts. Okay, looking good. So now what I'm going to need to do is I need to make sure that it's only affecting the darkest dark areas of this tree. So I'm actually going to go to the tree. I'm going to go to select color range and then I'm going to click on anywhere that is this brownish color and just move the fuzziness over until I get some more of that brownish color. And this is going to be the area that will get these fibers. So we'll press OK. It's OK if some of the darker areas get those fibers as well, because we're going to hop up here and just add a mass to it. Boom. That's looking good. I didn't think I'd be able to do this, but I think I'm getting pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and, and drop the opacity a little bit on there. OK, and that's looking really good. Those tree fibers are looking awesome. So the tree fibers now, if we turn those on and off, there's the before, there's the after. It looks a little bit more like what you would see naturally in a tree anyway. And it's okay if it gets a little bit on the branches because it just adds a little bit of texture and a little bit of detail to that. So let's go back and look at our tree. What was the one thing that we need to add here possibly? Uh, that was going to be that chromatic aberration or that bluish kind of edge that we see along the, the where, area where the leaves are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that tree, press Command or Control J. And after I duplicate it, I'm going to go to the bottom layer here. We're going to call this Ab just for aberration or aber. Okay, that way I know that this is the aberration layer. Now, in order to make an, a realistic looking aberration layer, what I need to do is fill that with what the realistic color would be for an aberration, which is typically gonna be a cyanish kind of greenish color. So I'm gonna control click on this, press and hold shift F5, which will then get me back into the fill options again, just like we did with the shadow, and go to color. And I'm gonna go to like a cyanish color here. That looks good. Maybe a little bit more of that greenish kind of look in there. Press OK. OK. And then press Control D to deselect. So now if I zoom in here, we can see that behind that little blur that we have there, there's a little hint of that chromatic aberration there. But I'm going to press V for my move tool and just nudge it left with my, my arrow key. OK, just a little bit to the left. And that will make that look like that chromatic aberration is on that left side of the tree. Now, again, that is typically something that's a lens flaw, but it does help to make it look a little bit more realistic. The next thing I need to do to this to make it look like it fits is to add some color grading to it. And there's a color grading method that I use quite often, and it's a, it's a really interesting one. What we do is we make a new layer. We press Control, Shift, Alt, and E. That's going to take everything that we did underneath that layer and slam it all together. Then we're going to go to Filter. We're going to go to Blur. We're going to go to Average. Okay, so that's going to be every color that is currently in the image all blended together like we're making a protein shake out of it. So let's go ahead and press Alt or Option and clip that into this layer. Now there's a couple blend modes you can use for this. I'm actually going to just use the soft light blend mode because it works really fast. But the color blend mode can work very well as well if you drop that opacity down pretty low. Basically what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, Tree, you need to take on all of the colors that are happening in this image in order for you to look like you actually fit there. Okay. Now that that's at the color blend mode, about 10%, the next color grading thing I'm going to do is just add a selective color adjustment layer here. And then again, press Alt or Option to clip this in. These clipped layers here are only affecting the tree and the tree only. They aren't affecting the chromatic aberration or the shadow, just the tree. So with this in the selective color, we could change this to the color yellow. Start with the color yellow and maybe add a little bit of cyan to that yellow to match some of the green that's happening down there in the grass. And then a little bit more green to that and then maybe a little bit more yellow to that. And then we'll go down to our greens, add a little bit of green to that, maybe a little bit of yellow to that, a slight bit of cyan to that. And now our tree leaves are starting to match the color of what's happening in the foreground 
And I think we're pretty close to being very realistic. But one thing I want to look at here is right down here. You see where the tree actually goes into the ground? It looks like the, the grass is overcoming the tree. So let's do this. Let's go down to the bottom of the tree. Um, looks like our chromatic aberration is down there as well. Which this chromatic aberration, now looking at it, let's drop the opacity down quite a bit. Okay. There we go. About 50%. So what I'm going to do here is actually I'm just going to grab my lasso tool and I'm going to just make it look like I'm making grass with the lasso. Just kind of go like this back and forth. It doesn't really matter if it's perfect or not. We're just going to go back and forth, back and forth all over the place. And then I'll move this around like that. Now, because this is a selection, I can just grab inside of it and just move it where I want it to be moved. So I'm going to press the delete key. I'm also going to do that on the aberration, delete the aberration, move up a little bit more, maybe off to the side a little bit with this selection. Click on the tree and delete it. Click on the aberration and delete it. And then blend this in a little bit more. Delete the aberration. Delete the tree. Press Commander Control D. Now, it looks like because I deleted so much of that on the bottom, that what I'm going to need to do is grab the aberration all the way up to the top. Press and hold Shift and click. V for my move tool and move on down. Okay. Boom. That is a pretty convincing little tree. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. But can it be put into an action? That was my, my main question at the beginning of all of this. Could I put it into an action and see if the action that I recorded for you can work? And if you're interested in this action, it'll be in the description below. Basically took all the steps there and put it into their own layers. Yeah, I pre-cooked a lot of this stuff. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to press play on all steps in one action. What it's going to do is it's going to pop open that dialog. We're just going to pick whatever tree it selects here. Press OK. It's then going to stop and say, hey, Blake, you're going to need to resize this tree. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Press and hold shift. Bring it out like that. Okay, press enter. Then it's automatically going to do the blur. It's going to ask me how much do I want to blur it though because again, I told you to zoom in and see. So we're just going to go with the two pixels that we went with before. Press enter. Then it's going to do the shadow. If it's not placed perfectly, it's going to tell me to move it. So I'm going to move it right under that tree. Okay, enter. Then it does all the color grading for me. It stops, basically tells me, hey, use a selective color to blend the greens and, greens and the yellows into the tree, and then use your lasso tool to cut away the bottom. So yes, it can be put into an action. What I want you to gather from this is not necessarily that Photoshop can't make the most realistic tree. Kind of knew going into it that it wouldn't. What I want you to gather from this is what we learned in the process. Number one, there is no suitable supplement for a tree in a field. <laughs> There isn't. We can't magically plant one. And even though Photoshop can render a pretty good tree with a little bit of work and the action that I provided for you, it's still not perfect. The second thing I want you to gather from this is that anytime you have an idea, you're working through a composite, you want to see if something can work, grab the things that you need in order to make that work, inspect them and analyze them like we did here. We phoned a friend. We found a tree that was already in a field. We saw what it looked like when it was in that field. And then we challenged ourselves to see if we could make it look like the rendered tree from Photoshop could in fact, look like a tree in a field. If you want the action to render a tree just like this, click this link right here. Here at F64 Academy, I just want to teach you to master Photoshop to make better photographs. This is Photoshop for photographers. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. It was fun. I sincerely appreciate you being around.